So it's a uh, Wednesday morning, March 5th, 9, 2014. This is the Board of Public Works. We're meeting to discuss upcoming <coughs> capital projects in the next two or three years. And, uh, and welcome. <laughs> so uh, in front of you is a series of packages that I printed. I sent electronically to you them last night to you for a review if you want to do it in advance. There's basically a draft from the CWMP, uh, which is the alternative analysis task number nine that was done. It is a draft, so keep that in mind. The second document was the Tate and Howard Water Asset Management Plan and recommendations and conclusions out of that particular plan. Uh, the other document is uh, total projected dam project costs, major item summary, which is our, our surface water supplies. Uh, the next two documents are debt service schedules for water and sewer enterprise funds. Current and what was proposed um, a year or so ago, um, which we haven't taken out those loans for. And lastly, there's a uh, memo dated March 5th, 2014 at the top that basically looks at what we see as potentially current projects or current projects for capital years 15, 16, even though the reservoir work will go into 17, 18 if the board wants to move forward with that project. So did you want to start from the top, Terry? Or if we go to the back <coughs> of this March 5th memo, mm -hmm. Uh, one of the things that Terry wanted to see was, or question me, is that if we were to borrow a million dollars over 20 years, what does it do to the rates? It basically increases them by nine cents on water or sewer for every million you borrow. And then it declines after that because, you know, your principal is going down, your interest is going down, but that's an approximate number to use. And also below that, I showed the water rates in FY14, sewer rates in FY14, the dollar value they went up on the percentage and then the current rates that they're currently at. So if we flip over to the front side, under March 5th, 2014, current projects for FY15-16, we start off with water. We have a free cash certification from the state of $4.275 million. That's available to us for projects um, now and in the future. Um, it's secured money according to the state. We have four projects listed below that on the distribution system, and we currently have $510,000 saved in the um, OOM budget, which is the capital side of our current budget. Uh, these four projects, Hinkley, Winslow, came out of recommendations from the Taylor Howard report, and they're actually in design and going out to bid this spring, or um, maybe even before that, probably spring. Pine Street Bridge, I don't know the schedule offhand. Do you maybe you can speak to that, Jim, where we are with that? We have 90% plans, and the uh, project was uh, scheduled for bringing this spring. Okay. And then we have the Clint. I didn't catch that. 90%? We received 90% plans that we are currently reviewing. Oh, plans. Yep. Whose project is the bridge? Is that a state project? Uh, it is our project. Um, currently, we've got a transmission main that lays along the the bed of the Mill River. You can mm -hmm. see it from the bridge at Pine Street at uh, 221 Pine. Um, so part of the project, it's actually a little bit more than the bridge, but a key component <coughs> of the project is getting the transmission main off the, the, the Mill River bed and up and hung from the bridge. And there's some other connecting uh, water line work associated with that. I see. So it's not a bridge project. It's not reconstructing <coughs> the bridge. It's a water line. It's a water line. Water line related project, project in, okay. the in the vicinity of the uh, arts and industry building. Yep. And the last project, Constant Pleasant Street, that is the roundabout that the state is under uh, doing under design with niche engineering. Niche uh, sends us a cost estimate for the water line replacement underneath it, and they uh, believe it was about three hundred thousand dollars to replace that particular water line. Um, we have to pay for that through the um, non-participating cost agreements with the state, and that was their construction estimate. We believe this money could be expended by the end of early or the end of FY15 into early FY16 if the project moves forward. That's why it's in this list. Will they roundabout also? They'll pay for the stormwater. Yes. And there's no sewer. There's no there. sewer to be in this part of that project. But it's all our money. Um, the 300000 for water work is our money. Right. 
because we asked to have it redone. Um, I believe it's about a hundred year old pipe there. It was suggested to be cleaned and relined at one point. So it's going to go through the project limits and up to the um, uh, the dike sheeting up there at the bowling alley. Underneath that we get into the bigger projects. We had suggested this one last year was the Ryan West Waisley Reservoir upgrades. Um, if you look at the one single sheet um, that says total projected dam project costs, it's the first <coughs> two uh, items there. I did some generous rounding up to $5 million from $2.5 million because it might not be in construction until FY17 or 18. Um, if you do a rough calculation, that increased the water rates by 45 cents if we do that particular project at $5 million, which is basically a 9% increase just for this one project. Although that would be spread over three, at least three years. Right, but you, do, but you would do one borrowing for the entire project at some point. You might go to ban, bond anticipation note in advance, but then you, you still have to square it up within two years. You can only ban for two years. And the way a bond works, it's not like a construction loan. You get the whole five million, say, and stick it in the bank. And then you draw from it. Um, the next project well, is... Before you go on... Yep. Go ahead and then I'll follow. So, I, I just want... The, the five million on the March 5th memo is... <coughs> did you take the, the totals for the... At the bottom of the Ryan Reservoir Dam and the West Waitley I did. Dam, which is like 4.4 4 something? Yes. And just rounded it to 5? I did. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. And the... My question was that, are we getting no uh, help? Oh, never mind, I see it now. The right in there, probably we don't know of any assistance for this particular project, except for water enterprise funds, for the Ryan West Waitley Reservoir upgrades. Right, but we have, but remember to never review. That's we still under review. Um, that project is currently being designed and starting through permitting. Um, Jim can speak a little more to the details on that removal project than I can, but basically we have $350,000 or so encumbered from last year that we're using for design and permitting. And so we are looking at last year's budget of doing a million dollar transfer. So it could be a million dollar transfer or we could see a 75% FEMA reimbursement, which that one I can no guarantees on. But this is the um, you know, the dam that's been noted as uh, the, the board decided to take it down. It's in poor shape and the state wants us to do something with it. And, and for the <coughs> reservoir improvements, are we under um, federal guidelines to move forward on, our, um, on these projects? We don't have a mandate for the phase two work for the Ryan and West Waitley, however, at some point, it probably will turn into a mandate, Jim. A state or a federal? I mean, the project is not proposed because of mandates at this point. I'm not sure we'd want to wait to get a mandate from the state mm -hmm. to maintain our largest reservoir. Um, a, a phase two analysis of um, dam deficiencies was done about a year or so ago by GZA, and they, they identified some deficiencies in the dam and they had recommended improvements that be done to the tune of a couple of million dollars at each West Whaley, which is the smaller one in the Ryan. Um, so uh, there, there are some deficiencies that, are, that need, to be, uh, need to be dealt with. Um, we think sooner than later, does it have to be next year? Um, I don't think it needs to be necessarily next year. Um, that would be a project that could, uh, you know, could be delayed by a year. <coughs> or even two years if you wanted to, but the way that we're looking at that is from a from a risk management standpoint for the city's water supply, we have a very detailed study from an engineering firm indicating that there, there are problems with uh, stability of the dam and inadequate spillway capacity. So knowing that information, um, I think it behooves us to, to try to get it into the capital plan within, you know, 
like I said, not it doesn't have to be next year, but um, that would be one that would want to do sooner than later because we're aware of the, the problems that have been identified. What's the all right? So <coughs> there, the inadequate spillway means we're at risk of some erosion. It, in other words, it'll overspill the spillway in a sense. Right. So uh, dam failures sometimes happen because of overtopping, and basically, as you've indicated, it's where you have more water that can fit through the spillway, ends up going over the dam itself, and uh, the remainder of the earthen sections of the dam aren't protected, wouldn't provide protection from that type of overtopping and erosion. So the, the dam could fail, that's, that's a, a dam failure mechanism that you'd want to protect against. And did they give us some sense of what, to what extent our current spillway is under capacity? They did in the report, yeah. And they looked at uh, they looked at three or four options about ways to increase and improve uh, spillway capacity. And how about the slope stabilization? I uh, mean, it, you know, to drive by it looks there's no obvious. I mean, just to drive by, it's like you look at it, you look away, it looks like it's always looked. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's you know, these are these are uh, interesting discussions to have because a lot of. And we had similar discussions with Upper Roberts. Um, the fact that you can look at a dam and you don't see a problem doesn't necessarily mean that there's not uh, that there there isn't a problem with it, or or that the dam doesn't meet the current design standards. I think we ran into lengthy discussions at Upper Roberts about this, where you have a dam. The Upper Roberts, in that case, was built the turn of the century to standards that don't meet common standards that are engineering standards that are required today. And actually, the Ryan Reservoir Dam is the same way. It's a much newer dam, built in the 70s. But when you analyze the stability of it and spillway capacity and things, the dam as it stands today doesn't meet current design standards for factors of safety um, for the dam itself or for spillway capacity. Um, that's why, you know, you have to. There's some judgment involved here, right? You have a professional opinion from a, a firm that does a lot of dam work indicating that the dam doesn't meet current safety factors, factors of safety for spillway capacity or stability, yet that dam has been standing since 1970. So you try to, you try to weigh the risk, right, mm -hmm. of what they're recommending professionally and, and what's been exhibited by the fact that the dam has stood for 50 years without, uh, without any problem. So, um, you know, I think personally, I think it's, it's a reasonable practice to look at these professional opinions from people that do this and try to, in the short term, find a way to deal with these deficiencies. It's the, prim the city's primary reservoir. You take it seriously. You want to make sure that's as safe as possible. Um, and that's why that dam work floats up to the top after Upper Roberts. Upper Roberts, we have a mandate to take that down, and there are a lot of associated risks with that, which is why it's the very at the very top. But Ryan falls somewhere below that. Um, and we need to be thinking about it in the, you know, in the, in the near term. Yeah. When, how long will it be before we run into another $5 million? Is this a 20-year rehab or a two-year rehab? <coughs> I would say it wouldn't be, I would say it would be a long-term rehab. Uh, maybe 30 or 40 years. Right. Really long. Right. right. So it's, 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 a, it's a true use of capital. It is. It is. I mean, the reason we're facing it now is is because of the change in design standards. Right. Primarily, there, are there any observed deficiencies like piping or? Uh, West Whateley, there are definitely observed deficiencies. Um, that's the smaller one. There are very uh, the stability problems associated with that are. Um, Water flow under the, the dam is a uh, well-known, very soft areas at the toe of that dam. Very problematic, I think. Um, it's definitely something that, that should be dealt with. Um, the Ryan uh, Dam, the only deficiencies really that, that can be seen um, are more, uh, uh, in a way, some of them are more just maintenance related to the concrete spillway. If you drive by there, you can see that they're um, spalling of the concrete and other um, issues with, with the concrete spillway itself that need to be repaired, but beyond that, you know, piping or erosion or, or other types of visible signs uh, don't exist. 
it doesn't make sense to fix this board <coughs> if it's sized inadequate. Uh, right. Which is why that hasn't been, we haven't moved yeah. maintenance ahead on that for a smaller project, thinking that it would be part of a larger project. But if we thought that work on the Ryan was going to be delayed for an extended period of time, we might choose to spend some short money um, doing concrete repair work on the spillway. So if, <coughs> so the primary reason for linking these two together is just that they're adjacent to each other and Ned had mentioned it would be efficient to mobilize for both jobs at once. But as, as you're talking, Jim, what I'm thinking is that mobilization efficiency might be a few hundred thousand dollars, but in reality, we could pull these two projects apart. And it sounds like the lower dam, the small dam, is, needs more work than the big dam. Well, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different ways to look at it. Um, the small, they, they both have deficiencies that are, um, that are of concern, of some concern. Um, the Ryan Reservoir, um, because it holds the majority of the city's water supply, in my mind, is a very important project to take care of. The smaller reservoir um, doesn't hold as much water, but also has safety deficiencies that we're um, aware of through those phase two studies in, in terms of the um, water getting under the dam and seepage problems and that sort of thing. Um, so the other reason for trying to marry those two is that there may be other um, cost savings by bundling them together <coughs> so then so that not being a four and a half million dollar project there might be more significant savings um, or efficiencies in the completion of the work by putting them both out together um, that would be the idea I mean I wouldn't want they both need to be done and, and we were hoping that the efficiencies would be realized I'm not sure we save a lot of money by separating them because unless you pay off the debt for the first project before you do the next one, the, the debt sort of overlaps at some point At some point for most of it. So if you wait a couple of years and then start the second one, you've, okay. you've, you've saved a few bucks for a couple of years, but you might have given up some efficiencies. Just so the board knows, the, wet weight, the West Waitley Reservoir feeds the Mountain Street Reservoir. You have to pump that up to the water treatment plant just so you're aware of that. And over the years, there have been talk of repiping that so it would be all gravity fed. We did look into that. Remembering correctly. That is correct. Is that still a potential? Um, we had a uh, we had a small study done that indicated that um, there's not enough head to flow by gravity from West Waitley into <coughs> the treatment plant, and that a small low lift pump station would be needed on, on, along that line in order to um, to get the water to flow directly without going from Mountain Street. So it defeats the purpose? Um, the, the benefit to it would be it would save energy costs in the long run because the, the it would be a smaller pump station because now the water flows all the way down Mountain Street and it has to be pumped up a lot higher than if you were to put a small sort of inline pump station, the amount of energy required to run that would be a lot less. So it might might pay for itself. <coughs> percentage of our water supply comes from West Wigley as compared to Ryan? Is it like 10 percent? I don't know the number of it. Well, somewhere right. in that vicinity. Yeah. Well, so it's not a critical? I mean it's critical for the reason that the reason that Ned mentions. The West Wigley the Reservoir doesn't hold a lot of water, but it captures water that ends up being held in Mountain Street, in the Mountain Street Reservoir through that piping connection. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the reservoir, just at face value, you may say, well, it doesn't look like a very big reservoir. Do we even need it? But that, res that, that dam has a very large watershed, and a lot of that water that gets captured is actually stored in the Mountain Street Reservoir. The Mountain Street Reservoir, by the same, by the same token, has a much smaller watershed, so its ability to recharge without that link to West Waitley is limited. So the, you almost have to look at those two reservoirs um, in a combined fashion. That's why they're both important. Mm -hmm. So, so all right. So let's uh, let's. I'm am just thinking about okay. So what does this all mean? 
um, it, it seems, first of all, to me, just speaking for myself, that we could pay cash for the distribution system work. Uh, it's in that uh, million dollar range where I think it makes sense to just take the pay as you go. It's not such a large project that I, it makes sense to borrow the money, which over the course of 20 years, even at 2%, is going to add almost a quarter of a million dollars to the total cost. Um, and I would think the Roberts Meadow Brook probably falls into that same category. What were you thinking in terms of the budget net? For Roberts Meadow Brook? And the distribution system work. Um, we have 510000 already, so we probably need... And, looks we've like got, and we've got four million. Right. So it looks like you need to borrow about a million dollars, or transfer about a million dollars for the distribution work. The Roberts Meadow Brook, um, we got the paperwork for obligation. They're doing 75% of the 500, so the board already voted to put $125,000 into this project. Um, so at the end of the day, that's what we need, but we still need a pool of 500,000 to draw right. from. For we, we have to do it first, and then would they reimburse us. Right. So it's, it strikes me, and, and I'm just offering this up for discussion, mm -hmm. that distribution system in Roberts Meadow Brook, we should just pay cash for. Yes, I think I agree. We should basically use the cash that's not working for us right. otherwise. And are there <coughs> reserve requirements for the cash in the water company? Yes. And there are. There are. We try to maintain our Moody's rating, and, and I was talking to Emery on uh, Levy about that yesterday. I believe it's about 1.4 million, 266 operational days. We try to keep in the bank at all times. So we could do both of those and still uh, have our reserve uh, requirements right. protected. Right. George Andrew Keaty's always wanted to have a million dollars for some reason. Why the million was chosen years ago, I don't know. I used to bug him about that. <laughs> should, come, really? It's, it's, it happened, if you do the calculation, it turns out to be exactly a million, <laughs> not a million and fifty or right. whatever. I mean, it was a, in the, just there, he pulled it out of thin air. So we, so, so I would say, that just for myself, distribution system, Roberts Meadow Brook, we pay cash for, and even down the road, Upper Roberts Meadow Dam. If we if we do, if we fund the whole reservoir improvement package at five million, that's that's uh, almost a ten percent bump. That's correct. Which is going to draw draw howls from the city council um, because we haven't even looked at sewer yet, and we've got stormwater coming in now, and we um, oh, promised is the wrong word, but. <clears throat> we have told the city council that we're going to be mindful of the fact that we've got these big enterprise funds. We're going to try to stagger things so that we're not doing <coughs> four re 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 individually reasonable projects simultaneously. Terry, I'm, I'm a little lost on the numbers. Uh, cash, 15, 1.5 million for distribution system, but under Ryan West Whiteley, that says 5 million. Right, but if you take the um, distribution system of one and a half million uh -huh. plus the Roberts Meadow Brook of a half a million, oh Robert, okay, never mind. Then you're up to two million. Yeah. And of less five hundred that you already have in the water line replacement right. account. Right. Yeah. So <coughs> and and even upper Roberts Meadow dam removal is that's going to take two or three years, right? But I thought you said the design and permit dollars. this year. Bidding in the late, so we'll, by the end of this calendar year, or early next year, and construction next. 16, uh, 17? Yeah, it'll take a year probably to <coughs> take it down. So, 16, 14, <coughs> design this year, and 14, bidding and construction in calendar year 15. And if you look at the red, like, all right, so let's just spitballing. If, if we, say, okay, all right, fine, the dams make sense. Even that could easily spread out until um, 2020, by the time you go through the design and the permitting. 
it could be 2020 before that's finished. I would hope it doesn't take four years to take down the, the dam. No, no, I'm talking now about the reservoir, the oh. Ryan West Waitley. Maybe a year to do the permitting on it and design. Calendar year, 12 months. And then two seasons for construction, at least? Might be. That one. So FY15, FY16, FY17, wrapping up in FY18, maybe? <coughs> but we have to, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. These are budget figures, so we're, they're not commitments, they're not a contract. So is it fair to say we could modify whatever we do today, uh, six months from now? Nine yeah. months from now? Right. Yeah. Right. The only commitments that we have at the moment are Roberts Meadow Brook, Upper Roberts Meadow Reservoir, and the four distribution projects. We were just trying to uh, prioritize what we think are the major projects that should be moving forward. Mm -hmm. You know, we're still going to fund $400,000 a year in the water line replacement account, the sewer line replacement account for street projects or fixing this or that, but these are the real big capital projects that we need to do something about. And, and of, the, of these four broad chunks here, really the reservoir improvements is the only one that's it's optional. completely discretionary. Yeah. The other three things are happening one way or another. <clears throat> but they commit um, all of the money, all of the free cash plus the reserve requirements. The distribution system, the Upper Roberts Meadow Dam and the Robert Meadow Brook. And is your point that if we don't start the West Waitley Reservoir, for three years, that by that time we might be reimbursed from the Upper Roberts Metal Reservoir dam removal, and that we would be able to use cash for that. If we do get a FEMA grant, I would assume we'd have that money back in by uh, Jim's timeline was probably FY17. We recoup all our money. Right. So not all of it, 75 percent. Excuse right. me. Right. I guess, Ro, my point was that the distribution work is essentially all already committed. Mm -hmm. The uh, Roberts Meadow Brook stabilization, we have received the FEMA uh, <coughs> promise to, uh, to reimburse us, mm -hmm. so it's, I think it makes no sense to not go forward. Mm -hmm. um, and the upper Roberts Meadow dam removal is in permitting right now. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're, we're reasonably obligated to move forward with those three mm -hmm. projects no matter what. So on this list, the only thing that's really uh, optional, if you will, would be the dam improvements up in Wakeley. Right. Yeah, no, that's a piece we can move around. As, yeah. I, look, can I, this? As I look at the costs we need from, from free cash, we need a million to do the distribution system work. We need a million, let's assume, to do upper Roberts Meadow Dam removal, so we, we don't get a grant. And after reimbursement, we need 125,000 for the slope stabilization. So that's 2,125 out of free cash of 4,002. So we'd still have 2 million in cash, free cash after we do, we, if we t make these commitments to use free cash. And still comfortably above Moody's recommendation. Right. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't even count the half a million we've got for water line replacement. Yes, yeah, it does. Oh, it does. Because okay. I counted, counted a million as the, oh, okay. the net for that. Right. So it, it seems like <laughs> it's a reasonable thing to do to proceed on that basis and, and not borrow the money. That, mm -hmm. that played really well. Uh, last year I went to the city council and kind of laid out what we were doing. And, they practically stood up and applauded when I said we were going to, you know, pay cash out of our 
This is short-term glory. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, we have a perfect storm brewing. Right. I know. Because right. when we get to the wastewater side, we're right. going to find it. Right. Yeah, and, and the reservoirs will come all together at the same time. So. But, and just to add to that, just so I'm understanding, so then we can we can commit to or um, call out the need for the reservoir upgrades with the idea that there might be free cash available to start on that project um, by FY16. But if we then had to go to um, uh, some kind of a process, you know. If we didn't have free cash for it, then um, <laughs> then we would have. We can start that. So considerate. Yeah. But every, if all, everything lines up, we can still. We. My point is keeping the reservoir upgrade in the project, and it just be more specifically funded. Well, I, yes, and and in fact. I guess my what I'm thinking in my mind is that numbers one, three, and four are already to some extent moving forward anyway. So we've identified number two as a great idea, and and we can move on. And it's one of those pieces we can move around. Mm -hmm. But I, but calling it out is my point. Yeah. I I'm hearing what our staff says, and I'm just saying that it sounds like it's something we want to have in the mix. I. I thought so. Chris? Um, just generally speaking, um, in a situation where we borrow for a project of this type and then we get, because we have to operate until it's awarded under the assumption that we're not going to get a FEMA grant, um, but we apply for one and it comes through, um, but we've already borrowed to move it forward, what, what then happens? Um, do you, what do you do with the FEMA money? comes back into the account. comes back into the account, but it's not. The, the reason I'm asking is because um, anytime you borrow, you, you, you end up paying more than you spend. Sure. And, and um, if we're in a situation, particularly on Roberts Meadow, where we know there's going to be a reimbursement, to me, it makes absolute sense to pay cash in that situation because you're, you, know, um, you avoid that, the, the cost of borrowing. Um, I don't think we were considering borrowing for Upper Roberts Dam. No, I'm just talking generally speaking. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm just saying. Sure. Yeah. Um, I think my point is, is that where, wherever there's a potentiality, a, a reasonable potentiality for a reimbursement, if we have the cash available, it seems to me to make sense to always go that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. As long as you believe in the borrower, that it's going to be there, which I think is valid. Yeah. I think it, it will be there. Yeah. We can bank on that. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <coughs> so under sewer, um, free cash certified was three point two five million dollars. Um, obviously, one of the biggest pressing needs that we have at the moment is the emergency generator at the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, we threw out a number there is fifty thousand to do a option study. Do we rebuild the old engine, do a supplemental generator, and bring it up to eight hundred kW, which is the recommendation from Kleinfelder and RTK engineers. Um, in the Kleinfelder uh, summary, the draft summary, they looked at a full replacement of the emergency generator and switch gear it being $2.6 million in costs. Uh, currently we're spending about $50,000 a year in generator rental, but it doesn't run the entire facility. Uh, in other words, um, it can't do sludge processing if we were to do this electrical work, um, we'd be able to run the plant in full with backup power for extended periods of time. We start having sludge problems after four to five days when we can't process. Uh, last year you approved money for plant intercom, pump station alarm upgrades, and take care of the water problem in the pump gallery down below. Uh, Jim's been working on a designer selection board proposal to get out on the street so that we can hire an engineer for that work. Uh, that money is committed. We're planning to encumber it into the next year, FY15, because it doesn't look like we're going to be expending this year money, so we'll just keep it going for next year. So those projects that you approved last year, are, um, have funds set aside for them. Um, 
And they don't show on this list. They do not show on the list because they're already funded. Mm -hmm. uh, John Carver, the chief operator down there, has two priorities that he'd like to get done. Oh, One is in the Thickner building. Obviously, the pumps down there, and the, they're pretty vintage. He wants to have those upgraded with new pumps, grinders, and have some um, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, cold compliance work done in that building. Uh, the estimate from Kleinfelder um, was about $550,000 for that. And the VFD bypass, when we had the flood at the plant when the generator failed, we had a lot of electrical work to get those generators in and hooked up and running. Um, this bypass would sit outside that you could just wheel in a generator and plug it in and away we go if we had a catastrophic failure again. Because that's the limit of that, that, that particular facility is that. And so only home, so much holding capacity in the primary clarifiers and then it has to move up the intermediate pumps up into the aeration chambers. And that's where we had the flooding occur from. Those pumps went down, had no backup system, overflowed from the primary clarifiers to the little mill riverbed. So this would be basically an alternate plug outside the right. building that you could plug in and keep that flow moving through the plant on an emergency basis. But that's assuming we have a power failure and the backup alarms and the backup generator doesn't work. So it's kind of triple protection. Are you done? I'm done. Uh, I, are there lifespan estimates on those uh, existing pumps? I mean, like, there's a year left in it, there's two years left in it? Those pumps were done, I believe, in 2002. It was one of the first years when I was here working. Um, I believe R.H. White was the contract. They put in the uh, three effluent pumps. They took out the Archimedes screws that were down there and put in a jockey pump for small flows. So that is... 10 years old, I would say that those pumps probably have a 20 year life cycle, 20 to 30 year at best. These are the thickener pumps? No, these are the uh, VFD. Uh, oh, actually, well, were you talking about the thickener or you talking was. about the VFD? I thought you were talking about the VFD pumps, no, I'm sorry. Okay. That's, that's right. <coughs> those uh, pumps are the original pumps that are in there right now. And that process is, from my understanding, is. If the thicker building goes down, we have no way of moving sludge into the processing facility. Mm -hmm. So it's, this is a critical element in sludge management down there. Right. So are there lifespan on the existing, I mean, when, when you say original, um, when, was, when was it built? I believe it was 30 year old pumps at this point. Okay. I can find out. No, no. But the thicker building would continue to be a valid asset for the next 20, 30 years? Well, one of the recommendations from Kleinfelder is actually building a um, thickener tank to hold, I believe, up to nine days of sludge for sludge management purposes for $4.2 million, I think was their estimated cost in this draft. But that's an option. That's an option, that's correct. So, so what we did now is going to be continuously usable for the next it will be usable 20 years. unless we decide to do something completely different on the plan as far as sludge management training to you know, what we're going to do and that hasn't been fully vetted or discussed. But what's happening at the plant, things are just wearing out. It's, it's seen its life cycle, a lot of it. And do we have a reserve requirement for the sewer or cash? I forget what the value is, but somewhere similar, 1.3, 1.5 million, somewhere in there, 266 operational days is what we our goal is. Or plus less plus million reserve million. money. Yeah. Right. On top of okay. that. So less than a million. Probably people by the same percentage. Yes, Chris. Um, on the VFD bypass, assuming you know, we had the same situation that we had last spring, uh, would this <coughs> if we were able to respond in a timely manner, would this avoid that kind of failure? Or help us address that kind of failure? It would help us address it would speed up our response okay. by having something like yep. that. Um, but, you know, like I said, how many safeguards do you put in the system? No, I agree. <coughs> I agree. Uh, the, the, my follow-up to that would be, um, as, as a result of that failure, um, weren't we hit with some, some fines? We, they had proposed fines and they... 60000 is is what the number that actually cost us about, I think, one hundred ten dollars or $120,000 for all the cleanup work that was done. Uh, it was reimbursed through insurance to okay. the city. Yeah, all right. Okay. Um, yeah. There was yeah. a pending fine. As long as if we didn't meet certain criteria or, or requirements of the 
notice of non-compliance with a penalty, mm. and we met all those requirements, and there was a five or six thousand dollar fine that oh, okay. never came out. All right. Okay. What are the t uh, chances of uh, getting any grants or, or state or federal reimbursement for these projects? I don't know of any. The only thing that is potential is once the comprehensive wastewater management plan is approved, my understanding that upgrades for the plant and our facilities are available through FSRF money, and we're actually bonding for about the same dollar value, 2%, a little over 2%. So it really isn't a huge savings going either way, but when we were going through the comprehensive wastewater management plan, we were bonding at 4%. So they could have substantial savings if the bonding rates are still that high. So, <clears throat> and sewer is continued on the back side of this page too, oh, the collection okay. system, which we are in good health with this. Yeah. Uh, we have 1.75 million in the OOM budget for sewer line replacement, and we're going to encumber for these two below projects, the Hinkley Street sewer and the Industrial Park sewer. We'll roughly have about $500,000 left in that line item for sewer line replacement or other emergencies that might come up. So, so you're saying that the collection system work is basically, we've set aside the money, we got that. Yeah, it's paid this, for, it's in the current budget. And this is separate from the free cash. That's so correct. So we're comfortably above Moody's recommendation. Okay. <clears throat> Could I go back to the emergency generator switch gear? Sure. It, have, the, uh, have the studies given us some balance? I mean, yes, we could put in the Cadillac Escalade uh, generator system, which even the coffee maker will run. Does that make sense? Is that is it? Does it make sense to to think we could run independently of the grid for weeks on end? We could with this generator as long as we were able to get right. A fuel but does, supply. Does, is that, does that make sense? Um, should, should we spend that kind of money? Yeah, to do I that? mean, for fifty percent of this much money, can we? keep things uh, from falling apart for uh, five days, waiting for, presumably, the grid will come back up. This is all part of, um, and I haven't seen the final report on resiliency, electrical resiliency from, um, I'm to remember the name of the group, Rivermore Group, the National Grid, there was a city project done, and we still haven't seen the final report on that, but they're coming up with uh, backup recommendations for backup generators to generators and so on. Um, it's always been Kleinfelder's thought that we should be able to run our full facility on backup power and not limited amount because we do come into a crunch time with solids management or sludge management after four to five days of not being able to process. If the grid is off for four or five days, we're kind of um, backing up a bit. But, but, but how point, often does the grid go down? Valley, I mean, Typically, it's a t it's not a quite a tier one like the hospital is, but it's a high priority with National Grid to get the water treatment plant online, the hospitals online, the wastewater treatment plants online, emergency services, fire, police, DPWs, things of that nature. Realistically, is it two days? Is it three days? I mean, if a hurricane came through and ripped out miles of wire, I, that's I don't know. I don't have that answer. Mm -hmm. So. I'm, it looks like for FY15 we're, we're proposing to do a study. Is that the study that would look at these issues? And would the study then look at different different load scenarios? Is that, so maybe... The 2.6 million number, I don't think we know whether that's the actual number. Right. Okay. I think it's the number that Kleinfeld has preliminary recommended, but I think some of the questions that Terry is asking is what size generator do you need, what function do you need it to perform, um, what are the options, sort of if you, if you can do, run this much of the plant with this size generator and you can run this much of the plant with this size generator and, you know, what are the, what are the options and what do you get in terms of your investment, that would be what that study would, would tell you. So it's, it's almost premature to have this discussion until the study comes back with those answers. I think the, the concept of putting the 2.6 million in the budget is reasonable, but I'm, I can't say that that would be the number that would spend. They might, the Kleinfelder number probably was a conservative. If you're going to put a number in your budget, put that one in there and then do the study and see 
maybe you'll come out with a $1.5 million solution or, or something else. So as, as a board, we might commit to a concept of upgrading the emergency generator and the switch gear, mm -hmm. but we, we don't need to carry a cost at least in the FY15 budget. Right. So what we would do is we put a line item in architectural engineering for fifty or seventy thousand dollars, whatever we think is the reasonable number. This is the number that we kind of threw around was fifty thousand for the study. Right. And we'll just put that into the OM account. But the other two items, thickener building and VFD bypass, you'd like to do in FY fifteen? I think you need to commit to the emergency generator work. Not spending the two point six but budgeting mm -hmm. it so that when the study is done you have the money to implement the recommendation. So we can't say we can't, for example, get the results of the study in December or January and then move forward if it's not in the budget. We we can't you adjust mean, things then. You can. We'll we'll start the budget process in January next year again. Mm -hmm. So let's say if we took a stu got the study done in FY15. Um, I'm not sure if we'd have it done by the end of this year or not. But if we did, let's say, you could start planning something for FY16 design services and maybe construction the following year. The issue is coming also is that the fact that we're run, renting a generator for $50,000 a year down there that we don't own. We could purchase one for $120,000 new and that'd be the backup power for the way it is until we do the project. So it's a, it's a lot cheaper money to do that and then afterwards you could surplus the generator or sell it or whatever you wanted to do with it. Why is that not on this list? Because I just thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> honesty. <laughs> Sorry. Honesty. <laughs> I, I mean, that's another option that you could yeah. throw out there, but the fact is that, you know, we are renting a generator, we're spending money. Do we have a use for a 500 kW generator somewhere else in the city or sewer department after, or do we just surplus and sell it when we're done after two or three years and all the study and work's done in that time frame? What's the generator capacity that's talked about for the uh, Mountain Street pump station? 500 kW, if I remember right. So that's in the same range. Right, but these these ones that we have the plant, what wastewater plant right now are is a portable generator. It's on a trailer. It right. moves. Well, it could be moved to the West Lakeland. It could be moved the Mount Street and permanently set on a pad and bolted down. So, so, just to wrap this up, then, the option study we certainly need to do. Mm -hmm. The two point six million may not hit until next year's budget, FY sixteen. Mm -hmm. The thickener building, fine, and I mean, to my mind, fine. Mm -hmm. The VFD bypass. But there, now we have a third option, a fourth option, another option to purchase the generator to replace the fifty thousand dollar rental. That does that seem like it? I I mean that's two and a half years <coughs> painting. Yeah. I mean I think that makes sense and mm -hmm. and whether it's your cold or whatever. I mean good thought. So all of that. So the the emergency generator study, the thickener building, the VFD bypass, and the purchase of a new generator could all easily be handled out of free, free cash. cash. Yep. I think the other issue with the emergency generator slash switch gear is that the switch gear, there were other electrical components that were um, <coughs> in need of upgrade. Um, so delaying those to FY16, I'm not sure it would be. Um, but we don't have the information yet from the study mentioned in the line above. You don't. So I'm, I'm not sure what you're arguing. Are you saying, listen, we might have the results earlier, therefore we should budget? Yeah, but I don't think the study is going to take a year to do it. You know, we'll, we'll get a, a firm in here within a couple of months. We'll have a study and a recommendation in terms of how to, you know, how to move. So the question is, do you put in 2.6 or some number in the in the budget, assuming that you <coughs> need some money to do electrical improvements at the plant? Or is there a way to go back to city council and take some money out of free cash or some other some some other way of funding the recommendations of the study? These electrical problems were 
Right, right but so I guess I, this is gets into the intricacies of budgeting. I mean, we've we've got plenty of money in the 3.2 million, and we've got uh, almost two million dollars uh, available without going below Moody's recommendation. Well, but but it's it's difficult to go back to City Council say in October, November. Can march in twice a month and ask for a transfer. But if we include the, the emergency generator switch gear, we don't have enough money in free cash if we have to put it in this year's budget. Because if we include the 120 to purchase the generator. It seems to me like we're always going to have to borrow the money for a two plus million dollar project. Right. So, <coughs> so the question is, do we build in that borrowing in FY15? Is that is that what we're? Yeah, well, that seems to be your question. Or for, do we? Right? Yeah. You build it in for borrowing. You see the effects of the rates that it would be. So you're looking at you know, for this, let's say it was two and a half million. You're looking at. Uh, how about if we build in the, the, the cost of design and to FY15 and take it out of free cash and show a borrowing for construction in FY16? That's that's what I'm. That's where I'm. Thank you. Okay. I mean, we he conceded pretty quickly. Well, know. we can we can tackle uh, some of this out of using free cash. It's it's not like so. You're thinking we might have the results of this study in September, in June, no. in well, we can't start we it. Until well, he said two months. <coughs> well, we can't start until July first. Right, but you're saying we'll know the number, the exact number, in two months. Later in the summer, probably. So, Labor Day. Yeah. Okay. Labor Day. Well, okay, so it seems like the alternative is that we can either not put it in the budget or put it in as a, um, a borrowing situation that could be changed. But, I mean, that may be fine. I mean, because that, that may be fine because the other issue is you're going to have an option study and there's going to be a recommendation to build something and then you have to design what needs to be built. So there's still going to be a time lag overdoing construction plans and specs. So by the time that gets done, maybe we'll be into FY16 anyway. So maybe what we need to do is <coughs> build in some money in the operation budget for engineering for design of whatever that recommendation is so that we can uh, we can move forward at least to that point and then FY16 will know specifically what the estimate is. So maybe that right. I, th I think everyone's on board to get this done. I mean, That's clearly cool. we don't want to just leave this whole thing hanging. Right, right. That's a critical feature down there that we found out. <laughs> it is. It's totally. But we need to have the design to make a, a, a empirical estimate on. Well, we need to report and some options. That's what I'm saying. We need to report to know what our our limits are. Okay. So the question still is out there. Do you want us to look at purchasing a generator outright? Yes. Okay. I think I think we've agreed on the study, the thickener building, the VFD bypass, and purchase. Yes. And, and design, and design. Yeah, options and design. Yeah, yeah so it'd be options plus design. Could be built into the budget and paid for out of <coughs> free cash. Yep. Yeah, and aside from of these optional pieces, if you will, um, the fund, the underlying rate would be more or less uh, steady for just the fundamental operations there's some nominal increases we see some chemicals go up I mean, there's nominal yeah. changes in the budget the capital improvements program that the city puts through there's vehicles that we've built into the OLM okay. there's 200,000 in water and 225,000 in sewer for new vehicles but those will be built into the budgets themselves and they're not part of a capital plan right and we're this. and we're working to stabilize those so instead of having nothing vehicle, nothing vehicle, yeah. it's going to be a, just a steady 
put it, we're setting money aside every year. Yeah, like wastewater. We set aside, um, then the wastewater treatment plant usually has pickup trucks or a car type, not, nothing huge. So we've been putting $15,000 away every single year into those accounts <coughs> and carting them, things like that. And we're actually doing that with the water uh, treatment plant this year also, starting that encumbrances every year of a small dollar value to keep things okay. moving in a replacement. So next one was solid waste. Uh, Precast certified is $1.93 million, $1 million at that point, at this point. Uh, Dave Letta is working on the financial assurance mechanism because there's some things that we believe are going to have to be done in the 30-year post-closure period that's going to take away from this fund, such as at some point the blower of the flare is going to have to be decommissioned as the quality of landfill gas decreases. That has a cost to it. If one of the flight leachate pumps breaks, you know, there's $15,000 to replace that pump. So the fan is due, I believe, in June to mass DEP. And so we should have a better understanding of what that actual free cash number will be after we have a new fan put in place. Um, other than that, as you know, the Salvador's Enterprise Fund is losing money. Um, I have a request from the mayor to meet with him and Susan, how we might be able to utilize some general funds to offset some of the costs in that, such as uh, Susan Waite's salary. She really does stuff that is community-wide events and not associated with just the vehicle sticker program here. Is that a general fund expenditure or does it need to be attached to this transfer station? Things like that. I thought you said the mayor wasn't or providing any. I've asked for another conversation with him on it. But I'm trying to, what we're trying to do is we see this deficit for F FY15, and I'm trying to decrease it as much as possible. Right. And does that include raising fees? Uh, there's there's a conversation that piece also about raising sticker fees. Right. Um, we've already lost some of our customers with that. But Solid Waste has no capital projects at this point. Right, right. Uh, next one is the DPW complex. We have historically put money in the budget for this every year. I don't know when the general fund is going to come up with their share of it. The question is, do we make the commitment year to year on the water enterprise funds to show the city that these two divisions, or these two enterprises, are ready to go with this project? It's a matter of the capital or the, the general side being able to show when they'll be able to do it. Is the money we've set aside to date hiding in that free cash? We never bonded for it. So I understand that, but we've been we have been setting money aside. I'd have to ask Anne Marie that. I don't. There's there's obviously there's money in free cash. Like can I ask Anne Marie? Right, but of course, but, but in years past we have put money aside for this anticipated building. We've always anticipated we built the following year and then we were going to bond for it, and so they're in projected future rates, not in current rates. So in other words, last year we looked at construction and. FY 1516, and here we are coming up with nothing's happening. So we actually never borrowed the money in anticipation. Oh, so we that. never set aside cash? I don't believe so. I will confirm that. We, we paid for design. We paid for design. Okay. And actually, this yeah. is the last year we're paying off the design because we didn't have a construction envelope within X amount of years, and we had to pay that design off in a three year period. Okay. So FY 15 is the last year we're paying that. All right, so that money's money is gone. Right. Um, Ned? Yes. So, the, the project, previously the projected rates included debt service for each enterprise fund share of this project. In the future. In the correct. future. But not in the current, the current year that yeah. been budgeted. I'll just pull out last year's here. Uh, just, uh, sorry, I don't, I don't just do the same thing. I have to go in a second, but yep. just before, um, while Ned's looking that up. Um, so, as far, as far as the tomorrow night city council meeting, um, in ordinance, everything, all of Jesse Adams's amendments, <coughs> Ryan O'Donnell's single amendment, all went through fine, except for one, and maybe I talked about this the other night, except for one related to putting a cap on the indirect fees or totally prohibiting indirect fees, that sort of thing. This is specifically administrative indirect fees, uh, not health insurance, retirement benefits, stuff like that. 
Um, the mayor is going to, I believe, revamp the way all of the enterprise funds administrative and direct fees are calculated. Uh, they're going to go through, I think I sent you all that document mm -hmm. listing office by office, what what each office. It's an overhaul. And it's yeah, due. they're going to overhaul all of it. So for example, right now on the sewer side, each of the offices in the city hall, the, the assessor, the clerk, uh, and, and so uh, forth, yeah, each of them on sewer, 3.6% is allocated to each office. Well, in fact, they found that the city clerk, for example, has virtually no uh, tasks related to the sewer enterprise fund. So Susan Wright suggests that probably we'll just zero that one out. On the other hand, some of them do more than 3.6%. So they're going to try to come up with actually an accurate number. On water side, on the other hand, it's 5.7%. No one knows why. It's just sort of a, that's what it's been, and it's <clears throat> so we hope to overhaul all of that. And the mayor's indicated he's willing to at least begin discussing pilots. We, between water and sewer, have eight hundred thousand dollars in pilots, mostly on the sewer side. Is this like from Smith? No, it's, it's the enterprise fund paying to the general fund payment in lieu of taxes okay. for the property. Okay. So it's it's a built-in. Great charge that goes to the So uh, I think there's broad agreement at the chamber and even recognition by Councillor Adams that maybe this begins to more effectively address the issue than a, an, a, an amendment that would be attached to the language of the ordinance enabling a stormwater uh, enterprise. Mm -hmm. So the amendment's not going to block any. Well, it looks like the amendment issue is going to go away. We'll see, <coughs> but at the moment. So it may go through two on nine. Jesse says he has amendment fatigue. <laughs> uh, so anyway, th we'll see. T so tomorrow night's the first reading. I'm pretty excited. I think it, it may work. So to answer your question, yes. In the FY14 budget, we had a seven million dollar payment out of the sewer enterprise fund. Bond issuance at four percent interest. Debt service payments begin in FY sixteen. Okay. So it was, it was two years out. So we haven't actually spent any money. Right. Other so than the question is, do I, mean, I like to think that the board is committing to the project, and this is their way of committing to it, even though the general side is can't get there yet. Right. But if we put this out as two years, is that by seventeen now? It shows our commitment of the seven million dollars in each enterprise fund and future. I mean, it's doesn't impact this year's rate, so right. That, I mean, okay. quite philosophically, it we shows we that like we support it. the project. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm afraid I need to go. Okay. Anything else? No. Does that? Thank I mean, you you'll meet a, a different group on Friday, but uh, this is wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. If you have any questions, please call me or Jim, and. Um, I'll get this information to Anne Marie and we can start working on the uh, the budgets and see what the numbers come up with. Move to adjourn. Second. Favorite. All right. Thank Thanks. You.